Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we'll be finding out which flashlights are the best to use in your Tarkov raids. There's a few reasons to use tactical devices in general and the first most obvious one is that by equipping one that has a light on it you can see better and potentially further in darker areas of the map. What I've done is that I've tested each one of the flashlights in the game in turn and then I've put them into my editing software so that we can go back and forth and see exactly what the difference is. Now the one thing that you really want to pay attention to for this first couple is this door here. We're looking all the way down the dorms to corridor and as we move through the first set which is the Army Tech Predator XHP which is probably the most bright and then as we go to the Zenit 2D onto the WMX 200 and then finally the Ultra Fire, you can see the door pretty clearly so if somebody's standing there a PMC or whatever you can see them no problem at all. As soon as we move out of these four flashlights into the next one which is the Steiner LazTac 2 you can't see the door anymore and anybody who is here will be hidden. So obviously you do get a wider beam. We'll look at this in a second. But these ones you can't see quite as far. So if you really want to see as far as you can into the distance, you have to use one of the first four. As we move on, I basically benchmark these by how far you can see on this structural beaming here. As we go to the Surefire X400, that's also not too bad. The 2U starts to get a little darker at the far end, but it is very bright, obviously. Same thing with the Clash 2P, it's not too bad either. The d bar is just a little dimmer in that area at the end. Now with the X1, you can see that this pillar is also dark. So this is a wide beam only, and you really start to limit how far you can see. Balder Pro is the same. And finally is the Glock GTL21. This one in all the testing that I did is pretty bad. Same with the XC1. The Balder Pro has, does have some good features to it, but the Surefire XC1 and the Glock Lite are just not very good in my opinion. So obviously, and clearly the best, if you want to see very far, then you have to use one of these four. Uh, as you can see, the doors there, as I go through the others, you can see much less into the distance than you can with these first four. So these are the ones of the clear winners. Army Tech Predator, Zenit 2D, WMX 200, and the Ultra Fire WF501B. So next let's look at beam width and the obvious winner in this category is the Clash 2U. This one is absolutely insane even compared to the next one down which is the 2P. You can just see how the beam width changes so if you do want to really see all around you and get more peripheral vision with your flashlight or torch say you're going around interchange or something then the 2U is the clear winner here. As we move on through the clip as I said we've got the 2P which looks very similar to the next one which is the d bal which is not bad at all. And then we've got the Balder Pro, which actually has quite a nice wide beam. This is probably one of the reasons why it doesn't really see as far. Next, we have the Laztec 2s. As I said, this has a better distance on it, but the beam is very slightly tighter, not really very much. Then we've got the X400, the GTL21, the Predator, the Surefire XC1, the Zenit 2D, the Ultrafire 501B, and the WMX200, which is very tight. This one is extremely tight. You can see even compared to the next one, Ultrafire, this one is like very, very slim. The beam on it is just not very big. In terms of this one, if you want a wide beam, then that's going to be the Zenit 2U. After this, a lot of them are very similar. The 2P, the d bal the Balder Pro, Last Act 2, the X400. These all have very similar beam widths. Alright, so next up, what is brightest against players? Well, in my opinion, it is this one, the Army Tech Predator XHP35. This is incredibly bright. We're very, very close to each other, obviously, but I really can't see them at all. You could just about make out the PMC's legs underneath, but it is incredibly bright. The next one here is the 2U, as you might imagine. You can see more of his legs than with the Predator, actually, but it's still amazingly bright and you can't see the head whatsoever. Now, I was quite surprised that the Steiner LazTac 2 was so bright. This one comes in third place, in my opinion, and all the rest are kind of around this level as well. So if you see the next one, WMX 200, these are probably about the same. And then the Clash 2P is again about the same. And the most of the upper torso is concealed. You just can see their legs. d bal probably next, Ultrafire, Zenit 2D, Balder Pro, Surefire X400, Glock 21, and the XC1, which comes out really bad as the very worst one. So if you want to completely blind somebody, make it so that they can't see at all, you probably want one of these lot, the XHP, the Clash 2U, or the Steiner Last Attack 2. I'll scroll through all of these as well, just so you can make up your mind, and you can go through it one by one yourself. So 
the final test with this is how wide are they? Now, the widest one I could see was the Clash 2U. So what I've done is I've snipped my little clip here just at the same position for each one. And we can see that at this point, the 2U still obscures most of the upper torso. It's very hard to actually see where our player is. As we scroll through, these are going to get progressively lower. So we have the Predator XHP, which is still pretty decent, but you can start to make out part of the PMC. Then we've got the 2P, which is starting to get quite bad. The WMX 200, the Ultra Fire, the Steiner Last Tac 2, the d -Bile, the Balda Pro, the GTL 21, the X400, the XC1, and finally the Zenit 2D, which is quite surprising. This one is extremely directed and basically means that when you're stood to the side of it, pretty much looks like it's off. One thing that's very interesting about this is that there are four that when you're stood right to the side, it doesn't look like the flashlight is on at all. And that does include the 2D, obviously, but also the Balda Pro, the XC1 and the d -Bile. These ones don't look like the flashlight is on when you're away from probably about 25 degrees or something, 30 degrees. You can't actually see the flashlight being on. Obviously, you'll see the effects of the flashlight on the wall and stuff, but you can't see the player with it on. All of the others give this slight orbing kind of effect so that you can still see that the flashlight is at least lit on that player. But with these four, you can't see it at all. Maybe you think that's an advantage? I guess that's up to you. As a broad reminder, you can attach most of these flashlights to helmets that are compatible these days. I haven't seen a compelling use case for it yet, but I'm sure somebody will be able to tell me some way of doing it. I mean, you could, in theory, attach a flashlight and drop a helmet onto the floor and bait people with it, something along those lines, but I haven't seen any really compelling reason to use it, and it's slightly clunky to turn on and off in RAID as well because of the little animation. So in summary thus far, it's probably the XHP35 that is the best flashlight. It's one of the four that can see the furthest, it's one of the brightest against players, and it's also one of the widest against players as well when you're using it against them. But there's something very interesting about the way that point fire works these days that we need to take into consideration before we just decide to slap an XHP35 onto every gun. The three actual flashlights being the Ultrafire, the XHP and the new Zenit 2D. These, because they connect to a mount and are designated flashlights rather than tactical devices, they don't give you any point fire bonus even if the flashlight is on. BSG did change the behaviour of these quite a while ago around IR floodlights and things like that, but I decided to go and test it because quite a lot has changed since then. So long as you have a tactical device that is on and it's not one of these specific three flashlights, then you will be able to get a point file bonus using these devices so long as the device is actually turned on on your weapon. This is really important because point fire this wipe has become highly inconsistent. It's not necessarily a problem that point fire is not as strong now. The issue with it is that you just can't predict what the pattern is going to be. Sometimes it goes straight up, sometimes it goes horizontally, sometimes it flies up and hits the ceiling even. So it's very random and it makes it hard to kill people using it. So the first most obvious answer here is that if you do want to use the Army Tech Predator, well, then you can just attach an NC Star Blue Laser to the other side of your gun, and that gives you the point far bonus, which is pretty good. But there are some more interesting things that you can do as well. Because the IR floodlights seem to be giving you the point far bonus again, you can potentially use the cheapest IR laser and floodlight, which always has it on, and you can have this on at the same time as something else, and it means that you always have the point far bonus, even if it looks like it's off on a daytime raid. If you don't care about having a laser, then the WMX is one of the best ways to set something up that's quite simple, because one of the reasons why this one isn't designated as a flashlight specifically and is a tactical device instead is that its alternative mode is an IR floodlight. This means that, if you're playing day raids at least, then you can turn on the flashlight when you want it on, and rather than turning it off, you can swap over to the IR floodlight instead to retain your point fire bonus without anyone being able to see that you've got a tactical device on on your gun. Taking this one step further, if you do want to have a laser on at least sometimes, then what you can do is combine the WMX200 and the NC Start Blue Laser together. What you want to do is start with the WMX on your gun and turn it on so that the flashlight is on. Then you add the NC Star Blue Laser to your gun with the NC Star Blue Laser being in its default off mode. And what this will do is when you turn the tactical device button on and off, it will either switch off the flashlight and turn on the laser or turn off the laser and switch on the flashlight so that they're alternating. If you want to turn the laser off and the flashlight completely, then all you have to do is swap over to the alternative mode, which is the IR floodlight, as we said, and then you have the laser off and the IR floodlight on, and you still keep your point fire bonus. Using this setup, there are three ways that you can have the tactical devices turned on. Laser on with the flashlight off, you can have flashlight on with the laser off, or the IR floodlight on also with the laser off. With this particular method, it doesn't actually matter what you do. There is no way to remove the point fire bonus unless you actually fiddle around with the attachments on the gun in some way. Unfortunately, this isn't really possible to do with any other lasers other than the blue laser. And this is because the blue laser is one of the very few lasers in the game that doesn't have any alternative modes at all. So it's not messed up when you change the mode on the WMX. 
One extra little tidbit of information that is kind of interesting is that if you're using iron sights and you point them at an enemy and they're using a flashlight and the gun blocks it, well, you don't get blinded at all. I don't think this happens with red dots and LPVOs because you can still see the flashlight coming through the scope. So this is maybe something interesting. I don't know. I need to test it a little bit more. So overall, for their combination of brightness and distance, I think that the two best flashlights in the game are probably the XHP35, the Army Tech, and the WMX200. If you don't want to mess about combining it with something else and you want the brightest flashlight with a laser, then you're probably looking at either the Laztac 2, the Clash 2P, or the Debal. So otherwise, as usual, big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.